Hi, good afternoon, Mike. So lovely to see you. Could you please give me your full name and your role? Hi, Lauren. Yeah, good to meet you again. Um, I'm Mike Day. I'm Managing Director of Indicator. We're a back office software company for all sectors in the hospitality industry with e-procurement, finance, employment and event software. We're, we're based in Reading in the Thames Valley Estate with Microsoft on one side of us and Oracle on the other. And Mike, can you tell me a leader that has really inspired you in your career in life so far? Well, as a, as a couple, I mean, a couple of leaders really that have inspired me. Um, one, a very strange one, um, uh, and one a business one. So the first one that really inspired me was uh, Robert Maxwell, who everybody will um, be aware of at the moment, again, with uh, his daughter, Ghislaine, being in the, in the news. And so that brought back a lot of memories for me. But I, was, uh, I worked directly for Robert Maxwell for uh, six years, before he fell off his uh, off his boat, and um, and really, I was inspired by his good points, not by his bad points, of which we all know he's got quite a few. Um, but his good points was uh, was his worth e ethic and his rapid decision making. I mean, he was on the go every morning from very early in the morning till late in the evening. There'd be a constant chain of people coming in and out of his office, whether he was buying a football player, whether he was selling a business, whether he was employing a new executive or kicking one out or so on. And he would just read the briefing papers that he was given as people were walking into his office have a few sentences, discussions with them, then make massive decisions, and then off they went. And it was, it was just amazing to witness that. And I asked him once, when, how can you be so successful when you make such quick decisions? And he said that as long as six out of every 10 came good, he was happy with the outcome. Um, but it was that, um, it was that fast decision making that, that really stayed with me and made sure that I wasn't intransigent in, in my own businesses and in business life, uh, and, but also made me accept that not all the decisions would be the right ones and be prepared to make decisions when they might not come out right. So that was one of my inspirations. He was certainly also, a, responsible for a lot of perspiration, but, uh, but, but certainly inspiration as well. And the other person who, I, I, when I left uh, Maxwell, I went and joined David Lloyd uh, at the very beginning of creating his um, uh, leisure empire. I mean, it really was. I joined him uh, after the first one had been launched at Heston. So I opened uh, uh, Rains Park, the second one. I then uh, helped build and, and equip um, the Finchley, and then we started building Bushy. And then when I left him, he went off and created uh, another 200. So he did very well without me. But his inspiration for me was his pure innovation as a pioneer in the le leisure industry at that time. It, there was nothing like it uh, and he was he really had this idea this passion that he put forward into the clubs and he he, he did it without using other people's money which was a, a good inspiration for me but also he was not afraid to change decisions quickly so we opened uh, Rains Park it was so success, successful that there were too many members. Everybody was falling over themselves. And he looked around. He said, well, OK, I've made a mistake. It's too small. So he immediately started sketching out how they were going to build a mezzanine over the, um, over the gym and on the back of an envelope, well, how many uh, units do I need? How many members do I need to get that? Boom, boom, boom. And off he went, rang the bank, got the money, and off and running. So those two um, people were really very influential in, in, in inspiring me to quick decision making, but equally to, to fast delivery as well, as soon as a market opportunity had been uh, identified. And what is the greatest learning that you've had in your career so far? Well, you know, Lauren, you, you never stop learning, do you? You, you absolutely don't. Uh, so that's a challenging one. But but one of the one of the things that came home to me was how transferable leadership skills are across sectors and industries. Uh, and I learned this, especially when starting uh, Indicator as a technology company, because I knew absolutely rock all about technology. I mean, zero. I could do an email. That was it. But I had an inspiration of what I wanted the technology to do. And, and don't forget, this was in 2000. Uh, the World Wide Web had only been created eight, eight years pre prior to that. So we really felt 
pioneers. Um, but I certainly learned that all the process skills that I had running hotels and restaurants and the contract catering business and so on, all those process skills were exactly what I needed in technology to make sure I understood how the chef and the bar person in using our software needed indicator to be very process driven for them and have the least amount of clicks and make it very easy for them to create their orders and get them to their suppliers. So, so that transferring of skills across different businesses and sectors really came home to me then. Absolutely. And your greatest success so far? My greatest success? Yes. yes. Greatest. Well, you mean apart from uh, surviving Robert Maxwell for seven years? <laughs> that, yes. Okay, apart from that. Okay. Um, well, I, I think really my, my my we always remember more recent things, don't we, than than, than the past. Uh, and my my two major successes, I feel, have been creating two startups you know, from scratch uh, into totally different sectors. You know, one in contract catering and, and and the other in hospitality software, and then building them up and selling them to, to both of them to huge corporations. Um, and both companies during my earn-out periods increased their value during the earn-out period. So I, I was very proud of, of those two, and still am very proud of those two successes. And on the other side of the coin, your great failure? Well, how long have you got? I mean, you know, I've got a whole list here to choose from. <laughs> so, like the lottery numbers, getting, choosing which ones to, uh, to tell you about. But I'll just tell you one. Um, I might, I, well, I don't call them failures. I call them learning experiences. I know that sounds glib, but, but it is. Um, and my biggest learning experiences was after a few, only a few years in Indicator. And um, we were still struggling to get sales. We were still trying to work out what the heck Indicator was and trying to get business. Um, and for some reason, we managed to land a huge multinational company, a massive great company whose name I won't necessarily share. But th th we persuaded them to sign a three-year deal and pay us for the license up front for three years. So suddenly overnight, with having not much money, I had a third of a million pounds uh, that they paid us. Right? And that was great. But the mistake I made was I treated that money in the bank as a comfort blanket. What I should have done is stood back and said, OK, how could we invest that money to really grow fast, both in the product development and in the sales and resources? And I didn't. I just left it in the bank. Uh, and, and in the early stages of the business, that was that was not a sensible thing to do. But hey, as we say, we learn from these mistakes and we're all learning experiences. And can you tell me a story about an incident or an event that really influenced you as a professional, influenced you as a leader? That sounds like a Max Brygrave line, doesn't it? I want to tell you a story. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, the, the, the event that um, had the most um, effect on me really was after I'd sold customised a contract catering business that um, uh, we had and started up with Lou Wilcox, um, and of course she was an inspiration to me for working with her for 25 years in customised and in um, Indicator before she sadly died um, a couple of years ago. But at that point, having sold um, uh, customised, I thought, what on earth am I going to do next? And I was recommended to apply to a short business course at Harvard. And, um, and it was called Odyssey. And the subtitle was School for the Second Half of Your Life. So it was absolutely perfect for me at that time. And the, the stated objective of the course, if I recall, was to provide time for introspection, introspection self-exploration, and an opportunity to step back, reimagine, dream, and dare. And that sounded like quite a good idea for me to do. And so I went over to Harvard pretty green. Um, I was pretty shattered having gone through a startup and sale over six or seven years. And on the course was this unbelievable mix. There's 40 people on the course at Harvard. And there were an unbelievable mix of different business leaders, some entrepreneurs, some from corporate life, from all over the world and from a vast range of industries and sectors. And everyone had joined the course at a crossroads to their career. And that had a really, and they'd all been attracted to 
to the course to, because it was going to provide them tools to work out what the heck to do with the next stage of their life. And also to do that in a confidential environment where everybody could share their hopes and learn from each other without being judged. And, and that really, you know, was, was a major, major event for me because, A, I came back to the UK and was inspired to start Indicator, but B, it changed my outlook on life. Um, but C, one of the fascinating aspects of the course was that for the second half of the course, they flew your wife or your significant other in. They joined the course. By this time, it had moved from Harvard over to a, an unbelievable hotel on the coast of Maine. And you're then with your partner, and then you're, you're in with all the other course members and the partners are brought into the course and they're then getting as much out of it, working what the hell they're going to do with the next part of their life. It was just a most amazing experience. So, so that certainly was an experience I, I haven't uh, forgotten. And if you were able to today give advice to your 18-year-old self, what would you say? Well, I guess that would depend on whether the advice I was giving was a prelude, prelude to employment of that 18-year-old or a start-up of one's business, because it, it, it might be different. But, but if it was the latter, if they were going to start up their own business, I'd just say, just get on and do it. Don't faff around, just do it. But I'd also say that in whatever, whether in employment or in, or in building your own business, build your own network of contacts uh, and, and find reasons to keep in contact with them over the years because you just never know when they're going to be successful or useful rather be persistent especially in sales and most importantly surround yourself with people better than yourself because that will give you a damn good chance of success absolutely wonderful thank you so much mike okay love to see you lauren